Welcome back to another camera channel. In this video, we're gonna be talking about the new Hollyland Cosmo C2. If you were lucky enough to go to IBC last year, you have probably already seen the Cosmo C2 in the flesh. It was on display at the Hollyland booth and the day has now arrived where it's finally released to the public. In a nutshell, the Cosmo C2 is a 2TX to 1RX system. And just like the Cosmo C1, which is a 1TX to 1RX system, it supports frame rates up to 1080p, 60 frames. So this is not a 4K capable system. What this product is designed to do is to make things more streamlined, more easier to use. Instead of having to use multiple 1TX, 1RX systems, what Hollyland have done is combine those two receivers into one, saving you on power solutions, on mounting solutions, cables, and hopefully a lot of hassle. So taking a look at the design, what you're gonna notice is this unit is way bigger than the transmitters. So these are usually designed to be mounted somewhere with good line of sight to your camera transmitters. We have two choices here. We have a quarter inch and three eighth inch connections on the bottom. For ports, we have an A side and a B side for each of your transmitters. And what we get is a 3G SDI out and an HDMI out for each transmitter. On the B side, we have the usual Hollyland on and off switch, and also the USB port here, which is for UVC streaming. Unfortunately, you cannot power the device through the USB-C, but that's okay because we have a V-mount battery plate on the back, which looks really good um, when you connect a battery to this, and it helps the unit stand up if you wanted to put it on a desk, and it also works very well with mini batteries as well. And for other power solutions, we have the DC input here. And this is probably the one that you're gonna be using the most if you are leaving this on for a very long time. You're gonna to wanna to have it plugged into DC power. And it is a locking DC connector, which is really nice. So you have no risk of it coming unplugged while it's on. And the only other port, which I didn't mention yet, is the Ethernet port on the A side. And that has a very special function, which was my first time experiencing one of these and it's very, very interesting. But we'll talk about that a little later on. The unit is now turned on and what we're gonna see on the nice screen here is it's basically gonna keep channel hopping because it hasn't linked to anything yet. And what I've noticed is it will just keep channel hopping until you connect one of the transmitters. Underneath the channel display, we have two sets of information. One is for your A transmitter and one is for your B transmitter. When it's not connected to anything, it will just show no video and the LEDs on the side will also show a strong red color. So looking at a transmitter, uh, what you'll see is it's basically the same size as a Mars 4K, if you're familiar with that. Pretty much exactly the same here, but with different antennas at the top, much, much larger. And actually, this isn't the way the antennas are meant to be. In the manual, it states they should be more like that. Um, but we actually used them straight up and we had no issues, but just so you know, the manual does state, should be a little bit like that, little rabbit ears like that. For inputs, we have an HDMI in, an SDI 3G in, and an SDI 3G loop out. So this is 1080p, 60 frames maximum. Because this is aimed at slightly more professional systems, this is why we're not getting an HDMI loop out, I believe, because SDI is more synonymous with high level production. So you're gonna have to think about your monitor choices because to get the lowest latency, you're gonna to want to go from your camera to your transmitter, then to your monitor. On the same side as the SDIs and HDMI, we have our locking DC power connection. On the back, we have a plate for MPF batteries. And then on the other side, we have the screen, the menu select button, the on off switch, and also the USB-C connection, which again is not for power. And on the bottom, our mounting option is a single quarter inch screw connection. So to power this, I'm gonna connect a dummy MPF battery adapter on the back and plug that into a V-mount battery. And on the other one, I'm just gonna connect it straight into the locking DC jack. Now, as they are paired successfully with the receiver, we have our nice, very bright green LEDs on the side showing us that both are connected. And we get the same green light on the transmitter. So you will know if you are disconnected from the receiver because once the receiver turns off or you lose the signal, these LEDs will turn red. And you can see that is very, very quick. So let's turn the receiver back on and I'm also gonna turn one of the transmitters off. So as you can see on the LED status, I have 
one transmitter is connected, so that's the green light, and the other one is red, stating that it is disconnected. And I have the same green light on my connected transmitter here. This is a really quick way of knowing that you're connected to the receiver. If you are quite far away from the receiver, if you've gone too far and it starts going red, you know you can back it up a little bit and get back in the range of the receiver. The stated range of this system is 1,000 meters line of sight or 3,000 feet. So it's most likely if there's nothing in the way of you, you're gonna have a very, very stable connection. One thing that is good is that it always seems that your B transmitter is your B transmitter and your A transmitter is your A transmitter, which is good. So you'll know if you've connected one camera to one connection and another camera to the other, they will stay the same, regardless if you turn off the system or not. Now, as someone who's had the chance to use this system before it's released, I'm very, very impressed. Last month, we had to do a live stream here in Korea for Aperture, the biggest event they've ever done in Korea, and they decided they wanted to live stream it at the same time. So here's the scenario. Our lecturers in a room speaking to the audience. There's around 100, 150 people in this room. And outside this room, across a small body of water, is a large 20 by 20 infinity mat being held up by a crane. And underneath that is a car and a bunch of actors and a small film crew. Our job was to transmit the signal from the cinema camera showing the actors and the car underneath that infinity mat. And also transmit a second camera signal from an FX6 showing the wide shot of the scenario happening outside. Now in our tech scout day, um, we brought pretty much all of our equipment that we had because we wanted to see what was gonna work best. And one of the dealers who was assisting with the event brought a different branded wireless video system. I'm not gonna name names. However, it is very expensive and it is marketed as zero latency. Now the thing about this lecture room was it was in a kind of glass and metal building. This other system was connected to the cinema camera first, but what we noticed is we could barely get maybe 20 meters from the window before the signal cut out. Now for a system which is very, very expensive and is meant to be very, very professional, that is kind of unacceptable, right? Luckily, we had this with us. And even though it wasn't released yet, we thought, let's give it a try. And this is absolute truth. This is no word of a lie here. This system here blew that other brand out of the water. Now bear in mind, these are both full HD systems. It wasn't like a 4K versus HD issue or anything. We just couldn't get the signal from the other system to get into the building. We don't know what it was. We don't know if it was the building design or other interference, but they tried everything they could to make it work and it just wasn't working. And when we tried the Hollyland Cosmo C2, everyone was blown away about how much range we were getting and how good the signal was as well. And a decision was made to use the Hollyland system for the event. So what I did was just set this up by the window, plugged into the power adapter, and it had a clear line of sight to where they were doing a demonstration. And then I ran two SGI cables out, one for the A transmitter and one for the B transmitter, and that ran into our video switcher. So now you've heard my little story about why I think this is so good. Let's run over some questions I think you're most likely gonna comment below. Is this a 4K system? No. It is 1080p, 60 frames per second maximum. What it does do, which is really cool, is there is an option to like upscale the frame rate. Uh, if you have a 24 or 25, 30p input into this, it will try and interpolate that into 60 frames for you, which is a very interesting technology there. I personally didn't use that as we were streaming at normal 30p, but it does have that feature set built in. Is this a zero latency system? No. The stated latency for this is 33 milliseconds. And as you know, anything you put in the signal chain is gonna kind of enhance that delay. So monitors or even the type of camera that you're using can make that delay longer. Even your display device that you're using on the output will add a certain amount of delay. What we noticed is there was only one or two frames delay, which is nothing terrible. Um, we're very used to this kind of delay. And in the context of the live stream we were doing, um, we did not have any issues with any audio latency either. Does this work with an app? No, it doesn't work with the Hollyland View app at all. There is no app support for this product. Does it automatically downscale 4K into HD on the input? No, it does not do that. You need to input an HD signal and that will be transmitted to your receiver. Should I buy the Pyro or Mars systems or should I get this? the Cosmos suit here. Well, that's totally down to your preferences and your workflow. I think this system works really well for events, live streaming, and studios in situations where you only need one viewable output. 
This is not like the Pyro system or the Mars systems where you can use multiple monitors at the same time to view the image. This system is designed to be robust and send that signal directly to one destination. Saying that, you are not just limited to the SDIs and the HDMI outs. Before, I mentioned the Ethernet connection on the side here. And this is something that I got introduced to with this system. First time I've ever tried it, and that is NDI. Now, what is NDI? NDI is a way of sending video signals over a network. So instead of using HDMI cables or SDI cables, which can be affected by length and also the expensiveness of the cable, with NDI, you can use cheaper networking cable, CAT5, CAT6, etc., in conjunction with a network to go much longer distances at a much cheaper cost. The quickest way to get NDI working, and this is what I did, is just to plug in your Cosmo C2 receiver into your network via an Ethernet cable. Then on your Mac or PC, download and install these plugins, which I'll link in the description below. Then what you can do is use this NDI viewer or open OBS and start adding your NDI sources. What you'll see is these two sources here, one for the A output and one for the B output. And just like that, you can see your video signals transmitted over the network to your streaming software. And the latency is really, really incredible. There's barely any delay. It's not exactly zero latency, but it's so, so quick. I feel you could easily focus pull over this system. And the coolest thing is it's only coming over one cable into the network and straight over to my Mac or my PC over Wi-Fi. For best practice though, and for I guess the best connection, it's best to use a wired Ethernet cable. For the first time I saw it working, I was really impressed. Your other option is to use UVC streaming, um, like we discussed in this video with the Pyro, and that involves plugging a USB-C cable, and then you can receive that signal direct into your computer or your Mac. So with the UVC connection, it basically acts like a capture card from your receiver and will transmit that video connection from your device straight into the streaming software of your choice. And with the receiver, it acts like two video capture cards at the same time, which is really good. If you saw my last video with the Pyro system, you might know I struggled a little bit getting two UVC connections at the same time. Uh, but I was told in the comments, this is not a problem for PC or Windows users. So that's a little bit of interesting news for you there. So who are these for? I would say these are for professional live stream and events teams, which want a very strong connection with a little bit less hardware than the traditional systems that we're used to. If you want to dabble with NDI and skip the video switch altogether, you can. There's also the UVC option as well. And I still think there could be a place for this on film sets if you are sending this straight to maybe a DIT who then broadcasts that out to different monitors. This could be a very surefire way of getting two cameras to that destination first in a very secure way, and then you can do what you like with it. But if you're looking for a system where you want lots of monitors and you wanna use your phone or tablet to view the video signal, check out the Pyro system up here because I think that will be a better choice for your needs. So thanks to Hollyland for sending out this product for us to review. It definitely saved our bacon on that live stream because like I said, the other name brand system just wasn't gonna work. Our backup would have been going to use the Pyros. We didn't actually have to try to use the Pyros because this system works so well. If you have any questions about the system, leave them down in the comments below and I'll try and answer them. These reviews that I make do tend to be a little long, but I do try and convey the information that I would want to know if I was watching someone else review the product. But if there is something that I didn't mention that you want to know about, just leave it in the comments below and I'll try and answer your question. Thanks again for watching this review of the Cosmo C2. Subscribe for more videos just like this. And as always, I'll see you in the next one.